Hello, everybody. My name is Bart Massey. I am a professor with the Unmanned Systems Technology Program at Hazard Community and Technical College. And today I have one of our students, uh, Christopher, appreciate you being here. And uh, he's uh, taken several of our classes and is enrolled in several this semester. And uh, Chris, let me ask you a couple of questions. One, uh, what is your interest in unmanned technology? What got you into this? Uh, I've always been into science my whole life. I've been into everything from quantum physics and particle physics into computer programming, AIs, neural networks. Drones just seem to be a new cutting edge field that seems to bring a lot of different technologies together. And I think it's got a lot of potential to take humanity into places we've never been before. Yeah, I absolutely think that's the truth. And you're doing a really good job in the classes too. I know, um, how many classes are you taking this semester in, in the UST program? This semester, I believe I've got two classes lined up in UST and I've got two in business. Okay. And I know one of the ones that you have uh, this semester is the, um, the fabrication and repair class. And I'm kind of excited about that class. This is the first semester we've taught this. So uh, you'll be one of the first three students that, uh, that have this uh, part of the education so far. And I think the really cool thing about that is um, your all's input will help us uh, develop it. But we've got a 12 week program that's gonna cover a lot, of the, a lot of the things that we've used over the years to build drones, test them uh, and all that. Um, have you ever built a drone? I've done a little experimentation, but I've never actually built a full-on drone before. So I'm well, looking this class, to it. Yeah, well, this class is kind of an introductory class for that, so it'll go through a broad, uh, a broad area. But some of the things that we'll talk about, it'll range from how to use a soldering iron uh, all the way to how to uh, program a flight controller. Uh, so in one semester, obviously you can't learn everything, but it's an introduction to almost all of it. Um, I, I, I was uh, introduced to this stuff almost like uh, somebody that's taught to swim when you pick them up and you throw them in the pool and tell them to fight their way out of it. <laughs> we, had a, we had a National Institute of Standards and Technology a project to build a heavy payload drone and they offended us to build it in 90 days and we had a good idea and it actually ended up uh, building a drone that flew we had one of four out of ten that flew uh, and it but we had some significant uh, learning issues from from the get-go you know how uh, different things work together so we've taken uh, people that have worked on that and other things and we'll have uh, videos that actually from the people that uh, built these drones and others will be talking to you all through this too so you'll have some awesome people from around the United States that'll be telling you about their experiences as you go through the study so I think it'll be pretty cool uh, so what's been uh, with the UST program what's been your favorite class so far so far, I believe I like the 107. The, it just gives you everything you need to know, get your part 107 license, actually get in the game commercially, able to do more, able to understand more, understand the regulations, uh, what all you can and can't do. I think that's so far probably been my favorite class up to this point. There's a lot of material in that class, isn't there? Because to get your license, you actually, the FAA has quite a lot to uh, for you to have to know and go over. So I like the fact that it's through 12 weeks. I know a lot of people will try to cram it in over a two or three day course, but it's really a lot of material, isn't it? It is a lot of material, especially when you start getting to the actual FAA regulations and then they just come out with new regulations in December. It's a lot to take in a short little amount of time. It really is. That's that, that was one reason that I was glad, and I try to guide people to the twelve week part because it literally gives that uh, 
the ability for that knowledge to kind of sink in. I've, I've had people who have taken it and worked over a week or two weeks and have been able to pass it, but it's really taken 100% of your time over that period to do it. So uh, the, I'm like you, it's one of my favorite ones to teach. I actually like the 100, even though I don't uh, teach it right now. Uh, Mr. Jeremiah Bryant teaches it, but it gives a real broad view of a, the history and also the potential of where drones are going. So I think what we've tried to do with this program is make it fairly diverse so you can pick out things you like to do and guide it toward it like one would be with first responders. Uh, we've got some that would be really good for real estate. And you and I were talking before this about uh, GIS and be able to use uh, PIX4D and fly and do photogrammetry and stuff. Uh, tell me a little bit about your interest in, in PIX4D. Uh, it's the planet. We live on it. No escaping it. At least not unless you're Elon Musk. Um, you've got to know where it is that you are on this planet. You've got to know everything about your surroundings. That's just one of the fundamental things of who we are as humans. We've got to know our surroundings in order to survive in them. With pix 4 and the ability to do imaging and mapping, we get a lot better understanding. We can understand um, weather patterns better, how the terrain affects the weather, um, flooding when it comes to emergency scenarios. We can better understand with the mapping where floodwaters may go, where the worst damage may occur first. There's a lot to it. There is, and you're 100% correct because I've had people say, well, now we've got Google Earth and we've got, but the satellite imagery doesn't do anything like what the detail that you get through uh, doing photogrammetry or uh, using the LIDAR. I mean, it literally pulls in millions of points of data and forms a 3D image of that area that can be uh, once you get that 3D image, you can refine it. Uh, we actually took an industrial park, leveled off 18 acres of land and put six buildings on it. And we literally changed the topography and everything right in that area and put the roads in and showed them what that would look like. Um, so you can do all kinds of planning. Um, also in this class, you can uh, have it fly around buildings and do 3D images of houses, buildings, you can do roof inspections. Um, there's all kinds of things like data over time. You can fly an area and get an image of it and come back six months later and fly it and see what the changes have been. And you can actually do that and have measurements of areas that's not even been worked on. I was talking, we were also talking a little bit about uh, this summer uh, about a program that we're wanting to do with uh, water in Perry County about the rivers. And we're considering doing 3D imaging of the entire uh, river through the, through the county and also doing water samples and using drones for that. So there's, a, there's so many things with the different sensors and um, the photogrammetry is just one part, but I really like the direction you're going because I think that's a huge potential coming up, don't you? Oh yeah, and that right there alone as diversified of a field as that in, is in and of itself, I mean, that opens up the doors to far more than just that. There are applications, like I said, dealing with weather. There are, I've seen videos taken by drones with tornadoes, for instance, given views that in detail before and wind patterns that I've never seen picked up by any other camera of a tornado actually showing how the wind field gets picked up and shifted in flight when the tornado actually begins to move, begins to shift course. It gives you a whole new perspective as opposed to just being able to fly in a plane or a helicopter. You're going so fast, you don't really have time to pick out the details. UAS gives you the ability to get closer to the earth, pick out better details. It just opens your eyes to more than we've ever been able to see before. You know, you say that that's really interesting. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I got a phone call from a gentleman. He said, we are been on the phone with the National Weather Service. And he said, we told him there was a tornado come through. 
And they said that they didn't pick it up, that they didn't know for sure it was a tornado. They said, can you come through and fly and fly over the path that it came through? And I did. And it was obvious that it had been a tornado that come right through there. The reason they were doing this because of insurance, uh, because some stuff had come through a house's roof and it also torn down a garage. But it was very obvious, like you're saying, you could you could just see it that where it had twisted and laid the trees down the direction it was going the entire, uh, and, uh, you know, it was, look, I'm glad nobody was hurt in that stuff, but it, because of that, it made it kind of cool to see how that worked out. Well, I'm excited about, uh, about the upcoming semester and the new classes that we have, and we're going to have several other new ones in uh, the fall that were, um, that are already in the pipeline uh, that I'm currently working on. You've been a pioneer. You're one of the first ones to go through, particularly to the level you're at. Um, and um, so I'm excited about uh, about all that you're doing and hope that we can, uh, with some of the work that we're doing with the Jericho Project and other things, to get you involved with some hands-on stuff uh, this spring and this summer too. But was well, there anything you'd like to, like to share with uh, anybody interested in this program? If you want to see the world from a new perspective, if you want to expand your horizons as to what this planet has to offer, if you want to help humanity in ways that nobody has thought of before, don't question signing up for these classes. Just go ahead and sign up for them. Well, I really, I'm really glad that you're uh, in these, and you're a you're a good person to speak out about it too. So thank you for your time to do this today, and uh, I appreciate. It. Look forward to seeing you in classes coming up in about a week and a half too. Looking forward to it. Thank you for having me. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.